Hi, my name is Kathy Craig. I'm one of the registered dietitians here at Del Sol Bariatric Clinic. So today we're gonna go over the new patient nutrition presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or give me a call. My number is 915-263-6951. So our clinic holds a support group every second Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. here at the clinic, as well as through WebEx. This support group is for those who haven't had surgery, our pre-op patient, as well as our post-op patient. The first half of the support group, we will include the newsletter that is sent out by, my, by myself, as well as an open forum where you get to ask questions to each other or discuss any new finds that you're finding through grocery stores or any exercise or anything that has to do with weight loss. So as a bariatric patient, we have you follow the bariatric plate. It is a six inch salad plate or just a child's plate. Half your plate is gonna be one to two ounces of lean protein. One to two ounces of chicken, fish, turkey, shellfish, lean red meat, or lean pork. The last two should be eaten in moderation. Also, it includes eggs and low-fat dairy and alternative milk products, such as soy milk. A quarter of your, of your plate is non-starchy vegetables, such as anything that does not include a potato, corn, peas, or sweet potatoes. Any vegetable I did not name is considered a non-starchy vegetable. You may have as much as you want without adding any oils, butters, creams, or sauces. You are allowed to add herbs, seasonings, Mrs. Dash, for example, to season your vegetables. The other quarter of your plate is your carbohydrates. Carbohydrates include in addition to the ones that I mentioned, your potatoes, corn, and peas also include rice, beans, lentils, pasta, bread, fruit, and tortillas, both corn and flour. A serving size of a carbohydrate is half a cup. A serving size of bread or tortilla is one slice. That equals a carbohydrate. With the bariatric diet, you are allowed 45 grams of carbohydrate. So that's equivalent to 15 grams, one at breakfast, one at lunch, and one at dinner. This is enough to feed your body and maintain healthy status. This also allows for the protein to be the forefront and to make sure that you stay healthy. When reading nutrition facts label, which happens to be your coral sheet in your handout, check for the serving size, the grams of fat, and the grams of carbs. The purpose is to make sure that you reduce the amount of prepackaged snacks and meals. You wanna make sure that you're not consuming packaged foods that are too high in fat and carbs. So be careful of foods like chips, cookies, crackers, sugar-free um, snacks as they are high in carbohydrates. When looking at your food label, per serving, look at the total fat. The total fat should remain under five grams. For example, maybe you selected beef jerky. If that beef jerky is greater than five grams, it is not bariatric friendly. However, there are some products that you may find that are under five grams. If you do, then that item is bariatric friendly. And then if you look at the total carbohydrates, we're looking at total carbohydrates and not net carbs. It should still be 15 grams or less. So for example, if you're looking at a protein bar, majority of protein bars are gonna be low fat, high protein but the concern is that they're gonna be high in carbs. So look at the total carbohydrates. If it's over 15 grams, again, it is not bariatric friendly and is not the best option for you. If you have any questions regarding any item, if it's 
low fat or low carbohydrate, please contact me. Regarding beverages, we recommend 64 ounces water daily. That's equivalent to four water bottles per day. Your beverages um, need to be caffeine free and alcohol free. These are mild diuretics and can cause ulcers. So we wanna make sure that you avoid those after surgery. You are allowed decaf tea and decaf coffee. Also, we wanna avoid carbonated drinks as many of those are high in sugar can cause weight gain and over time can stretch out your pouch, introducing more food into your stomach causing weight gain. Be very mindful of your eating. Eat slowly and be aware of being full. Please do not skip meals and no excessive snacking. Make sure that you are hitting your protein goals. So be careful with that. If you are dining out with family and friends, split your food or put it in a to-go box immediately when served so that you do not overeat. I also suggest that you ask for a salad plate so that you can measure your food versus trying to eat off a normal size plate given to you at the restaurant. So you also must incorporate whey protein isolate into your regimen once a day. If you are lactose intolerant, we recommend that you incorporate plant-based protein supplements, whey protein isolate, as well as plant-based if you're lactose intolerant. We want to monitor tolerance of protein. For some people, they do become lactose intolerant and they experience bloating, cramping, gas, or diarrhea. And these are the things we wanna check before surgery. If you do experience this, please reach out to your dietitian to help you select an appropriate protein. You can also replace skip meals with your protein supplement. For example, if you're trying to lose a little weight before surgery, you can do two meals and one protein supplement shake or one meal and two protein supplement shakes. Just make sure that you eat consistently a meal at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, whether it's a shake or a meal. So why is protein so important? For one, it helps you feel full longer and it promotes consistent weight loss. If you think about when you consume carbohydrates, carbohydrates give you energy that you need and fuel the brain. But soon after eating them, you feel hungry again. This is not so with protein. So. Um, we wanna make sure that you consume enough in your diet. Also, your body does not store protein the same way that it stores fat. So protein must be replaced on a daily basis. And this is why we encourage you to have a diet high in protein. Your diet helps the body heal and fight infection. You will have incisions from your surgery and we wanna make sure those heal properly from after the surgery. It also lessens hair loss and muscle wasting. We want to prevent any issues with malnutrition since your body is gonna be pulling fat and muscle really quickly. So re please remember, protein supplements and foods high in protein is a lifelong commitment. Always eat your protein first. If you think about your plate, I want you to eat protein first, your non-starchy vegetables, and then your carbohydrates last. For anyone with a BMI over 40, you will follow a two-week pre-op liquid diet. This diet is essentially to help shrink the liver as the liver sits on top of the stomach. You will consume protein shakes and other liquid foods. We wanna reduce the intra-abdominal fat, improve the visual field for the surgeon, reduce complications, and in the process, you'll start your weight loss journey. It is very common for my patients to lose about 10 pounds at this time. The day before surgery, you will switch to a clear liquid diet. With this, it is gonna be whatever you can see through, so you will not drink your protein shakes. You will drink sugar-free, caffeine-free, and non-carbonated liquids. This will include broth, crystal light, sugar-free jello and popsicles, nothing red or orange, so it does so it doesn't look like you're bleeding. 
decaf tea and decaf coffee. And then remember on the day of surgery, nothing to eat or drink. After surgery, they will put you back on a clear diet. One of the dietitians will come to visit you to check to make sure you're doing okay. And then we will also place you back on that liquid diet that you were following previously. This two week post-op liquid diet you'll be on will include your protein shakes and other full liquid drinks. If you are doing any pre-made liquid shakes prior to surgery, we're gonna switch you to powder form. So please no Premier or Fairlife shakes after surgery. Stick to whey protein isolate or your lactose intolerant, um, your lactose free shakes such as GNC Earth Genius, soy protein or Isopure Nature's Best Plant-Based or Vega Sport. After two weeks, your dietitian will advance you to a soft foods diet for eight to 12 weeks. And at this point, you will begin to eat soft, tender, moist foods, nothing necessarily baby food or puree, but things like eggs, cottage cheese, mozzarella cheese, tuna and other fish, canned chicken and other soft foods. At your two week follow-up post-op appointment, we will educate you, give you handouts, and tell you what foods are allowed. In addition to the soft foods, you will continue to drink your shakes to meet your protein goals. After about 12 weeks, you will be able to advance to foods of regular texture. So you may be able to add certain kinds of meat, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, salads at this point. We will also tell you foods to not eat for at least three months, such as starchy foods, rice, potatoes, as they can get stuck in the pouch. Other foods that you will have to avoid during this time will be raw fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and tough thick cuts of meat. But at the 12 point, we'll, at the 12 week point, we will begin to include these foods slowly. So problems you may experience following surgery. Please know that these are normal after surgery and may resolve. Some issues may include lactose intolerance, dumping, nausea, vomiting, constipation, dehydration, bad taste in the mouth, decreased appetite and taste changes, increased gas immediately after surgery, and hair loss. With dumping, it is the result of food moving out of the stomach into the small intestine rapidly. It is partially digested food, which draws excess fluid into the small intestine, causing a sense of malaise, just feeling uncomfortable, nausea, feeling like you're going to faint, abdominal cramping, maybe diarrhea. There may also be vomiting in the process. It's a real ugly feeling. It may occur immediately within the first 15 minutes, or there may be a delayed effect and may occur after about an hour or so. If you have any concerns, please reach out to your dietitian or nurse regarding any dumping that you may experience. Um, dumping may be caused mainly by the consumption of sweets, foods high in fat, foods high in carbohydrates, eating and drinking too fast, or eating and drinking too much. Food intolerances after surgery. Intolerances usually develop immediately after surgery and may lessen or disappear over time. So common ones that patients have reported change in taste, texture, smell, and appetite. If you have issues with appetite, I recommend that you set timers so to ensure that you're eating throughout the day. Taste, texture, and smell may result in eliminating certain foods from your diet but for the most part, you should still be able to incorporate most healthy foods back into your diet. Some patients report sensitivity to sweet and sour foods. They may report that their protein shakes are too sweet. They may report that crystal light is too sweet and have to dilute it. This is common. Reduced tolerances and cravings for sweets and high fat foods may also occur. Poorly tolerated textures include sticky textures, crunchy textures, tough, chewy meats. These may feel like foods are getting stuck. They may be things that you feel like you may need to avoid. 
What I recommend is that you avoid them for about a week and reintroduce these foods. For again, for the most part, you should be able to include these foods again. Lactose intolerance, for those who are not lactose intolerant, some people may develop this after surgery. If you do, please let us know so that we can recommend new shakes for you to consume. Symptoms include diarrhea, nausea, occasional vomiting, abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas. After the consumption of milk, dairy, or even some protein shakes. So you may have to avoid things like milk, cheese, ice cream, whey protein isolate, and other products that say may contain milk. Pre-op vitamins. We recommend you start taking vitamins three months before having surgery to assure adequate health. The three that we recommend is just a standard multivitamin once a day, a vitamin D3, 5,000 IUs per day, and a probiotic, 5 billion CFUs once per day. After surgery, we're gonna recommend bariatric friendly vitamins. Reduced food intake after surgery could possibly result in vitamin and mineral deficiencies. It is recommended that patients take vitamins formulated for bariatric patients, just because they are not well absorbed and are not as potent. You will not start your vitamin and mineral regimen until two weeks after surgery with the instructions of the dietitian. Cost. Approximately $185 every three months, which is about $2 per day for your vitamins. If you have any concerns about your vitamins, please feel free to reach out to the dietitians to help guide you along the way. On this page, monitor nutrient intake. We want you to have your goals set up, your protein goal, your carbohydrate, and your fluid intake. I want you to begin to monitor these so that you are meeting your nutrient goals. When you meet with the dietitian, ask for your protein goal per day. Your carbohydrate goal will remain 45 grams per day and your fluid intake will remain 64 per day. We also recommend smartphone application, Berry-tastic and drink water reminder. Berry-tastic is a food tracker that you can track your food, water intake, and exercise. And Drink Water Reminder is a water app that you can track your water intake and receive notifications, let's say every 15 minutes, to let you know to drink so that you stay adequately hydrated. Remember, the surgery is only a tool. What you put into it determines the results that you have. If you eat the wrong foods and do not change your lifestyle, you will, change, you will gain your weight back. Your team is available to answer any questions and provide the needed support. And this is the end of the presentation. If you have any other questions, please give me a call or contact me at my email address or my phone number. Again, it's 915-263-6951. Thank you.